Join me to Milan, Italy in United's Polaris Business Class. We'll check out the Polaris Lounge, its food and amenities. Then we'll check out the onboard service and discuss what went wrong with this unfriendly crew. I've finally arrived in Milan after a very long and unusual flight. And there's this interesting Andy Warhol exhibit here in the airport. Let's back up. How did I get here? And what went wrong? I'm here today in the Oculus at the World Trade Center in New York. I'm about to jump on the train to Newark Airport. We've got an exciting trip today. We're on our way to the north of Italy. I'm flying today from United's major hub at Newark Airport where they offer daily flights to Europe, Latin America, Asia, and even Africa. I'm using frequent flyer points to fly United's Polaris Business Class, which gives me access to the swanky Polaris Business Class Lounge. It's a big step up from an ordinary United Club. There are several types of both individual and group seating available though you'll find it gets quite crowded during the late afternoon rush. I did manage to find a seat though. At each seat you'll find power ports and these now out-of-date USB-A connections. There's a self-service drink and espresso bar, though why not try out the full-service bar? They have an eclectic array of wines, spirits, and cocktails. The options are far more extensive than what you'll find up in the air. My personal favorite choice, an old-fashioned. The Polaris Lounge features a major step up in food from what you'll find in an ordinary United Club, including a full salad bar, hot entrees, sandwiches, and a range of desserts and candies. But I suggest you skip all this and head over to the a la carte dining room. This is where United sets itself apart from its competitors, very few of which offer a la carte dining in a business class lounge. Be aware that during the busy late afternoon period, just before most flights to Europe, you might experience quite a wait before you get a table. Like a restaurant, the dining room features a menu with table service. There's a variety of craft cocktails designed specifically for the Polaris Lounge, along with a range of spirits that goes beyond what you'll find on the airplane. Everything is complimentary with your United Business Class ticket. There's a short selection of appetizers and entrees, and a separate menu for breakfast. And here's my first craft cocktail. Let's give it a try. Ah. To sample a variety of menu items, I start with the Caesar salad and the vegetable root soup. Both were delicious. The Polaris Lounge is located next to United's busiest international concourse at Newark Airport. So there's great plane watching like this Boeing 777-300, and a variety of 787 Dreamliners. Since I'll be here for a while, it's time to try another craft cocktail, just as my entree arrives. Because most flights between the US and Europe go overnight, United offers this pre-flight dining for passengers who'd like to go to sleep as soon as they board the plane. As you'll see on my flight later, waiting for the airplane meal can really cut into sleeping time. It should come as no surprise that there's nothing like champagne and dessert to round out your experience at the dining room in the United Polaris Lounge. As a full-service business class lounge, United offers additional amenities, like this work area with quiet spaces and phone booths. There's also a handful of nap pods with this questionable cricket music piped in. Head past those and the starry sky to find an area of shower suites. 
So last time I showed you the shower suites at the United Lounge, which is the regular lounge for frequent travelers. But this is the Polaris Lounge for people who have business class tickets. So the shower suite is actually a little bit nicer than over in the club. There's more amenities, there's slippers, there's a bunch of Saks Fifth Avenue towels, um, more than you would get over in just the regular United Club. Even though it's five o'clock in the evening, it would not be a complete review if I didn't take a shower here. <laughs> Okay, this rainfall experience is pretty nice. You can actually get both jets going at once. And there you have it, all showered. Now there are not a ton of places in the aviation world where you can take a shower, but there are only two that are aboard commercial airplanes. We might have something to show you regarding that in a future video. Okay, enough in here. Let's go fly United Polaris to Milan. The United Polaris Lounge is just about as good as it gets for a business class lounge. I found it was a better overall experience than what I would have on the plane. Because Milan and New York are their country's respective financial capitals, United schedules some of its most premium configuration aircraft on this route. Hello, fine man. Thank you. This 767-400 features economy in a 232 configuration and premium economy in a 222 configuration. The large forward cabin is dedicated to United Polaris business class in a staggered 111 configuration. It's a fairly dense business class, but the seats are comfortable. The seats recline into a fully flat bed and feature a number of storage areas, like this vanity and cubby hole to the side. Seats along the two sides of the aircraft are staggered between those closer to the aisle or the window. The window seats have more privacy. The TVs are a decent size, although not industry leading for business class. The seats feature footwells that are fairly large and comfortable, and you'll find multiple places to charge devices, although United still uses out-of-date USB-A ports. You'll also find a reading light next to your seat. While other US-based airlines have gotten rid of theirs, I love that United still offers an in-flight magazine. Each seat features a sizable and sturdy tray table for work or in-flight dining. Business passengers also receive a nifty amenity kit. At the time of my flight, United partnered with Away Luggage. It features earplugs, socks, a toothbrush, nightshade, products from Sunday Riley, tissues, and a pen. These unique amenity kits mimic the hard plastic casing of Away brand luggage. From United's partner Sunday Riley, you'll also get a facial cleansing cloth, face cream, lip balm, and hand cream. With this long flight ahead of me, I'd better put some of this stuff on. And refreshed. Well, now I had better sit back, relax, and get ready to go.
a wide variety of TV shows and movies to choose from, but I suggest you bring your own noise-canceling headphones if you want to hear. For flights to Europe, United offers business class passengers warm nuts, an appetizer, and a choice of four entrees. Breakfast is supposed to be served, but this somewhat slow crew didn't get it out in time. On longer flights, such as those to Asia, pajamas and slippers are also available. I chose the Turbo, which ended up being tough and dry. The Soba Salad Appetizer ended up being a lackluster and out-of-place choice. I would have preferred something relevant to Milan, like risotto or prosciutto and melon as an appetizer here. I do love some of the little touches though, like the plateware and especially the salt and pepper shakers, which are like 3D renderings of the old Continental Airlines logo, which is now a part of United. Business class meals end with a choose your own topping sundae. A fruit and cheese plate is also available, though they are rather bland and mild cheeses. One complaint I would have is the slow service of the business class meal, which didn't wrap up until the plane was already off the coast of Greenland. This leaves little time for actual sleep. Many passengers will want to fill up in the business class lounge and skip eating on the plane. I will point out though that this wintertime flight had an aggressive tailwind which was pushing us along on our journey faster than usual. As the winter winds race us along to Milan, it's time to get ready for bed. United offers bedding from Saks Fifth Avenue, including a comforter, blanket, ordinary pillow, and this quite excellent cooling gel pillow. The business class lavatory is stocked with some extra amenities. I've headed there with my United pajamas I saved from another flight. There we go. It's time to go to sleep. Has my Ambien kicked in yet? Still waiting on that. Before I know it, I've dozed off, slept for a little while, and woken up again as the sun rises over the plains of northern Italy. On this flight, the crew decided there wasn't enough time to serve breakfast, which I found annoying. Crews on US-based airlines can be hit or miss, and this crew was mostly a miss. In addition to the slow dinner service and the missed breakfast, this crew made up a rule that United doesn't allow filming on airplanes. That is, until I showed them United's own website saying filming is allowed. I'll say more about that at the end of the video. On a more positive note, as the plane descended towards Milan's Malpensa airport, a misty view of the Italian Alps appeared out the window. That's where you can find me in some of my upcoming videos for a ski adventure. Overall, this was not my best experience with United. While the hard product is pretty good, the soft product, especially the meal services, are a key area for improvement. But the biggest downside was the unfriendly and inflexible crew that tried to enforce a no video contrary to United's published policies. This United crew would turn out to be like night and day compared to my Emirates crew on my return flight. Two thumbs up to the pilots for a very smooth landing. Agenti qui a Milano, a nome di United e vostra equipaggio, vi ringraziamo per aver scelto venire con noi. Speriamo che questo ruolo sia stato molto piacevole.
Ok, buona giornata e in arrivederci a tutti, grazie. So that was quite an interesting flight. And you sometimes find this with airlines is that the flight crew aren't necessarily up to date on what the airline's policies are. So on this particular flight, there were some flight attendants who argued that you're not allowed to do any video on the plane. In fact, one of them told me it says it in the fine print of your ticket. Well, that's actually not true. Not only is it not there in the contract of carriage, that's the fine print on your ticket, but United Airlines has a specific website that lists all of its policies for electronic devices. And it clearly says you're allowed to use a small video camera uh, for your own personal use on the plane. So I'll be very curious to see uh, what United's customer service people say to me as their official response to what I heard on the plane.